of those can uh, figure out what your relations are if you have those defined in your database layer. So you have to explicitly define those. Yeah, uh, so I can actually send you the entity portion where you can define the joins and everything for your specific entity. Oh, you can define those, okay. Yeah, so you can tell it what, uh, what tables to join and yeah. Uh, okay. Everything is set up in the entity class. So you really don't have to set up the data, the data mapper. You just set up the persistent layer and it uh, doctrine automatically sets up the mapper. Any other questions? Um, I know it's mostly an opinion, but do you have you experienced any times where one is more useful in an application than the other? Um, this when one design pattern or yeah, yeah, one library. Yeah. I think, so there's a library thing. So I think that Eloquent is really good for startup applications where you don't have a huge database where you don't, uh, where you can use primary keys. Uh, so I think Eloquent is really good for startups and Doctrine is good for larger applications. Um, I prefer Data Mapper as far as design pattern, mainly because I like to have my database spit out an object. I like to manipulate the object and then I want to put it back in the database layer and have it update the database. I don't like to have to carry around the database layer with my object. But that's just preference, opinion completely. So how about testability? I noticed that you're calling several static methods off of my objects. So with the active record, how easy is it to detach the object from the database and test it so isolated uh, in an isolated environment? Um, test, so test, so actually Eloquent comes with its own <laughs> testing suite of methods to make it easier, but if you were to use, I mean you could essentially, your, all your business logic is also in the method, so you probably wouldn't test your database methods anyways, you would test <coughs> your business logic which is a gray area because what's the difference between database layer and business logic? Uh, well, you look at the definitions, they're pretty much the same thing. And there's like Faker and, right, like the mock? Uh, yeah, so yeah, Faker just uh, is for really migrations, for adding data to the database, like fake data that you want to test against. Okay, I thought there was one that was uh, where to, uh, uh, for mocking prophecy is uh, yeah library there yeah well There's, I know in, in the application the, the testing that bakery done, or that eloquent does provide a way to test and it does use mockery um, Mock but it's giving yeah. some voodoo magic to basically you can say I want to make sure this select statement is called with this param and yeah it basically does that. it basically just turns off the actual call the actual right. calls yeah it, it is separated but it does it in a weird even if you're using statics it'll does some kind of weird voodoo. Yeah, it, it catches it mid-flight and then validates it according to whatever structure you're expecting. And it just returns like a true or false, basically. Or uh, maybe it's an assert exception. Yeah, it's black magic. Yeah. Um, so I have another question. Uh, so with active record, it kind of everything, uh, you know, since you're, it's all combined in one, the database layer and the actual object layer, kind of seen, seen as a point of authority. Um, is there any point of authority in the data mapper pattern at all, or does it? it there's no point of authority until it's actually sent back to the uh, mapper class. So, so what happens in Eloquent is that you have to include your database layer and your business logic. So if you want to manipulate your accounts object, it has to be in that same class. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of data mapper is you separate the objects business logic from the database logic so I can get the data from the database for hydrate an object and then manipulate that object uh, and then you know use it in your application and the, the, so the, the big benefit I think of it is uh, you don't want to really use primitive data types this is I think uh, I like to use data mapper to build classes to remove the Primitive data types from you know, method calls. I can I can say hey uh, this method requires uh, a the 
object that counts, and if it doesn't get that, it'll blow up and I can handle that. Whereas if you don't pass a standard object and you call, or you don't pass the object, you don't, uh, you don't check the, the uh, object type, and you just continue on like, yeah, this is the object that I'm expecting, and let's say it was a null, and you try to call a method on that null value, it'll say trying to call a, a method to a, a non-object. Whereas you'll know right at the method call, you didn't call, you called it a null, so it'll blow up right there. That's, and if you do that with the uh, eloquent design pattern, you're passing not only the object, the hydrate object, but all the uh, all yeah, all the database methods with it. So how does validation differ between the different patterns? So uh, in this specific example, I'm actually hydrating uh, in the class. I would actually use a, uh, in the real world, I would use, or in a legitimate application, I would use a hydrator to hydrate it, and then have the hydrator validate uh, what's required, what isn't required. Um, I'm a fan of getters and setters. So I follow Ockermus a lot, who built Doctrine. Ockermus is one of the developers for Doctrine and also ZF2. Uh, he doesn't like getters and setters, which I find really weird because I look at all his code and he does a lot of getters and setters. I don't know if it's pressure from all the other people that he works with. Uh, and so, I forget the. He has a, a hydrator package too. Yeah, so he built the ZF2 hydrator package, and then he thinks it's too slow, so he built the standalone hydrator package. Uh, that I was so the great thing about Zen's packages is you can take them out of Zen and use them. Like if you want to use a Zen package in in Laravel, you can. Uh, and I was really like the hydrator stuff for hydrating data mappers. So we're going to bring that over. Members noticed that Ockham has created a, a hydrator that's faster than. So Zen, Zen likes to include everything, the kitchen sink, everything in Zen. Uh, and this one was a little, a little less than what Zen's hydrator package can be. And it's so the 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 Zen one's a strategy pattern which hydrates on different strategies. So you might have like a hydrate. Uh, there's, there's just tons of ways to hydrate. Anyone else have any other questions? Um, could you comment about Doctrine's unit of work versus the active record approach? Uh, when you say unit Level of effort, you mean? No, the Doctrine has a concept of a unit of work, which involves how you load data and store data back, versus active record, you're dealing with every record individually. Or am I making sense of what I'm asking about? So, yeah. Uh, I don't use, in our current uh, space, we're not actually using it for them. So, okay. oh. so uh, in that specific area, I haven't touched enough, or it's been a while. So I, the last time I used Doctrine was like two years ago. Okay. But yes, yeah, so it is separate in the way that, uh, in how Eloquent works, is they, you have a data, you have the database layer, it gets data, from the database, and it will convert it either to a multi-dimensional array or a standard class. And in Eloquent, it just you just hydrate an object with that data. Whereas in a data mapper, you have to hydrate each individual record, and then maybe have a collection that can collect over and iterate through each. So that's what you're talking about. Uh, um, are, are you referring to like when you save multiple objects, whether they're called a separate database call for every single object in Reactive Record versus all of them, updating all of them at once on the uh, it, it, oh, you're talking about to that. Way I know in, doctrine, in Doctrine you have a flush. Mm -hmm. So you pull the data records out, you manipulate the data records, and at the end of the process you flush the transaction mm -hmm. out. And it, I don't know how it decides how to do the updates on the back end of it. And I know, but I know it's just you do the flush at the end. Whereas on the active records, I was thinking that you wanted to do save on each individual object uh, or something akin to that. Yes, so uh, you would, it would end up like doing a where in, I 
think that's how it is, is that I'm going to have all this data and then we'll just do you know, a where in so it's safe, like each individual record based upon where in, I believe. Um, in, in Eloquent specifically, there's a few instances where you can actually pass in a collection of objects and okay. it will actually go through and do a little bit of diffing to find out what needs to be done and make it all on the call. So I think it's all in the but, but they're all But they're all kind of specific. So, so you, unit of work, the, the actual design pattern itself, and I had to look this up, I don't know this, uh, from Martin Fowler talks about when you, you're messing with a collection, each time one of the items in the collections gets changed, it's marked as dirty. Right. So then the idea is that when you go to save it, you don't have to say, go save. All the ones that have been changed automatically get saved, and the ones that right. are not, don't. So I don't know how uh, Doctrine specifically approaches it, but that's what the, the underlying concept is for anyone not familiar with that one, which I wasn't. So. Yeah, I, had to look. I, know, I know the pattern you're talking about, yeah. but I know the Doctrine calls it that specifically in their yeah. approach. <laughs> So what about speed? Performance. As far as performance? Yeah. Um, the, the difficult part about performance is that Doctrine's library is huge. So when you talk about that part. Uh, like, it, it, for, is there like a general rule of thumb for most applications written in one thing is going to be slower or faster than most applications written in another thing? It's such a broad, a broad, broad. You're not willing to take a yeah. stand one way or another. <laughs> well, so yes, there are differences in speed. Yes. Which <laughs> implementation? <laughs> yeah. The weakest part of your application is your database. So it's it's difficult to say which PHP library is going to be faster when you rely on how fast your database is, like how how much data you have there, how many calls you have in your database. So I wouldn't say the doctrine is faster than Eloquent, maybe because I'm worried more about your database help than the, the library. Yeah, if your database is designed poorly then, yeah. or exactly. super huge so, so and designed poorly. That, I think that's where doctrine, doctrine specifically is really great, because it kind of, it's like do it right or I'm going to require you to do a lot more work. That's what makes it painful. Doctrine first <laughs> and database because of your doctrine layer. But when you have the database first and then you add doctrine, it's like you really screwed up, and I'm going to show you all the places that you really screwed up by requiring mm -hmm. to do all this work. Where eloquent, <coughs> there's areas where it's the same scenario, but not because you did it bad. I think I think both of them will will auto generate models. Based off of ex an existing database structure. I mean, like Jeffrey yes. Way. So the, the, the difference, though, is uh, based upon the doctrine class, I can specify what the table structure is going to be. On Eloquent, if I don't want to, use, like, let's say I don't want to add use primary keys, I can't say, all right, in the in this class, use this as the primary key. I have to specify. So on Doctrine, I can uh, remove, uh, here it is. You have greater control in Doctrine? Uh, oh, yeah. But, so uh, the, I'll show you. There's actually this huge thing on removing all the incremental keys from Eloquent. If I can spell it right, we can Google it. So, so pretty much my only, uh, that's the large cap stuff. Their new site design is pretty nice. So you have to specify the, the primary key. This is for Eloquent. I wish that, I don't know, I should probably look at the Laravel documentation. Whatever you use, you want UUIDs and not auto increments. So I could do that and it would probably blow up when we spend the rest of the evening on it. So how about this question? Does Laravel support, or the Eloquent stuff support uh, type mapping or column type mapping? Um, so I didn't see any of that. I have been told that it does. Yeah. But, but so, first of all, I'm going to start with saying the documentation for Laravel is very bad. <laughs> so that's why uh, the best documentation for Eloquent is probably your vendor directory. 
<laughs> the, the documentation is good, but it's incomplete. I think is the yeah. main issue. Yeah. So what they have there is very basic. If I want to do yeah. anything beyond what's documented, you go to Laravel.com slash API. Yeah. And just yeah. A bunch of namespaces though. So you yeah, like look at the directory. I can find it in the <laughs> The, the, and there's other stuff too, right? I mean, there's Laracast and the Breeze code. I mean, there's there's a lot of documentation that exists in the broader community. Right, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can find the answer which you're looking for on how to map Eloquent to your database. Um, the problem, so the thing, so the thing that uh, I don't like is that auto-incrementing IDs aren't a good idea all the time. So why not make it easy for me to not use auto incrementing IDs? Instead it's like, all right, well, it's not super difficult because there's not a whole lot of work required to do an eloquent uh, model. So all you do is um, set a protected variable for primary key and that's your primary key, but you don't specify what kind of uh, variable it is. So if it's a string, if I want to, um, you know, get, I don't know, so to, to make very specific database calls for finding something, and I use a primary key. So if I do find and I pass something to, to it, uh, it wants to find an object based upon that primary key. So what if I don't want to search for something? Like a, a unique so compound key or something. Yes, so uh, I think that they have, and you might even be able to override it, okay. override the, the find, but. Yeah, you can. You can, but you can also just use the where column instead, just yeah. say where column value, and it does the exact same thing. Yeah, but so if you already have something built out and using mm -hmm. find on IDs, and now you want to change it to a UUID, then you have all these calls that are finding an object based upon an ID, and now you switch to UIDs. You're saying that I should change them now. No, you don't have to do that. But I mean, you can choose. You can specify what the primary column is. But if you're going to use a primary key of any type, whether it's a string or an ID, it's understood to be unique. So as long as you just say use this column, use this column as the ID column. So, so what I'm saying is, it's so we're finding objects and not on the primary key. Well, if your UUID is your primary key, that's the column you're searching it. So you yeah, primary key doesn't have to be auto incrementing. It doesn't have to be an integer. It just yeah. needs to be unique. Yeah, it's just that's what, it only offers the primary key to be an integer by default in the migrations. It has nothing to do with the actual model itself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one question I do have is uh, one thing I love about Eloquent is that it has a lot of these difficult or weird uh, relationships out of the box, like polymorphic relations and many, many polymorphic relations. Does Doctrine have anything like that out of the box? Do you know? So, so uh, in, in, the, in the entity class, you actually set the relation, so I can show you that. I didn't want to jump too much into Doctrine, because there's a lot of stuff in Doctrine. And I think it's all in annotations, right? From what I remember. Yeah, so. Or XML and YAML. So you don't yeah. have to do it with the annotations that I don't think the PHP natively supports, if I remember correctly. But I can't remember. Are the are those in different files? Like yeah, you have to be in separate files. Yeah. So I'll sh I can actually show you that. So I on the this Bootstrap portion, I actually set the annotation metadata configuration, and on this I'm saying that I'm actually getting my metadata from the actual class. If I change this to so I think I started to, yeah, so I had a configuration YAML and I was going to set it up in here, the configuration for the classes. The entities. And then you decided you didn't want YAML. Well, <laughs> if you want to make it super confusing, switch between <laughs> files a lot. Like, I have no idea what he's doing because I'm using it around too much. Oh, that hurts me. <laughs> and it happens way too much. Yeah, I, well, so I already think that I switched two files to which we did. Alright, so this is the uh, YAML, XML, and then uh, based upon the code blocks. So this one is just same path to YAML mappings. And then let's see if I can. No, you know, I think awesome. 
there is a YAML mapping in uh, Doctrine. They're not showing to you there, but they do have XML and YAML as support. Yeah, so yeah, that's what, so this, what this is showing is the, how to configure to use the YAML or XML mapping, but I was hoping... Does it have examples? Right, no, they do. Uh, if you go over to any of the other areas in the documentation, I have so a, I just picked the one page that doesn't show here. Yeah, so go over like section five. Uh, if you hit at the top, the Doctor Two or in Two documentation, and hit like objects, so it should have it, and it gives you scroll down. There you go, right there. It shows all three of them right next to each other, just like the symphony does. So this is an entity? Whatever floats your goat.